Hello and welcome to the Edinburgh Northern Cockerel Cast, episode 20. Michael, uh, I finally run out of pub stash, uh, having to cycle through them again. Uh, did you think we'd get this far? Um, well, I, I'd hoped when we first started we wouldn't be we three, three months into lockdown. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been really good content so far, some really good guests. Um, looking forward to tonight's one. Um, so tonight... Um, <clears throat> on the core cast, um, we're actually going following where we've ever gone before, uh, geographically anyway, uh, to South America and to Paraguay. Um, our guest tonight is a man of little subtlety, uh, a man mountain whose time at Northern was brief, but his jarring impacts and impressive stature will live long in the memory of those he ran over. Um, although he sadly left the club and Edinburgh itself to work as a legal representative to a drug dealer, um, we know how much he valued and enjoyed his time with us. Um, it is, of course, Andy and the Sir. Um, how are you, Andy? I'm fine, Michael. Uh, how's it going? Jace, cheers for the introduction. That's all right. <clears throat> We're very good. Thanks very much. Cheers. Uh, so what are you drinking with us? Um, drinking today, I sort of put a little bit of thought into this. Um, I'm drinking a Paraguayan ale, which is called Sajonia, okay. roughly Saxony. It's a very traditional sort of English type neighborhood uh, from Paraguay. It's a golden ale and I'm drinking it out of a Five Kingdoms Brewery pint glass, which is located in uh, the southernmost point of Scotland, which is where sort of my ancestors came from. It's the Isle of Witton. You can actually see the Five Kingdoms from that point in the island. So I think it's pretty cool. I didn't. I didn't realize you had Scottish ancestry. I do on my mum's side. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! Fantastic. Done. Uh, so I've got a, a, a Guinness extra stout. Uh, I think I had enough of them at the club AGM, but one more didn't hurt. <clears throat> no comment. Um, I have a I have a mango Berliner, um, which I got from Great Grog. Um, and it's the closest thing to a tropical beer I've got. So it was an honour of your climate, Andy. Um, Cheers on that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll move into the body of the interview. Um, how, how's Lockdown treating you? Um, how, how are things in Paraguay as well, I suppose? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm very fine uh, here. You know, generally speaking, I, I've still been able to work. Can't really say the same for a lot of people, uh, sadly, you know, during the, this lockdown situation. I haven't been able to work. I've been working from home. Uh, weather-wise, it's started to get a little bit chillier. Some nights, not all of them. Uh, the rest of it is just pretty much summer. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm missing just rugby friends. Uh, just going about and about just for no reason but other than that it's been pretty good actually man uh, so let's go right back then and, and tell us basically where you're from uh sort of what you do and how you sort of worked your way to edinburgh and back home then right um okay i'm originally from paraguay which uh, has a capital city named Asuncion. It's right in the middle of South America. Uh, I work as a lawyer in a law firm. I do mostly uh, consultant work for companies, whether just uh, privately held, not really that much on publicly owned. A bit of uh, banking law, some sort of competition or but just the basics uh yeah that's pretty much it i worked out my way to edinburgh initially 2015 we were touring the world cup with some mates and i thought it was a good idea to just go and see edinburgh fell in love with the city it was just great and then when i was looking for options for my llm which is uh you know postgraduate uh master's degree I looked up the university. It was a very highly ranked and brilliant. 
So I just said, I have to take a chance. Got accepted, and that's pretty much it. I had one of the best years of my life. Okay. Fantastic. <clears throat> no, I, I know I know you, you did really value your time then, but um, every conversation we had, you always praised it and enjoyed it. So that was good. Um, obviously, you joined Northern at um, some point, but what was your what's your rugby background like? Um, your previous clubs? Um, this is a loaded question, obviously. Was there any representative rugby along the way? <laughs> um, yes, it was. So, well, previous clubs, I didn't really have any previous clubs other than my only club, which is called uh, Kurda. It's an acronym for University club from Asuncion. Uh, incidentally, we're turning, we, we just turned 50 years this year and well at least we'll be spending our 50th anniversary as reigning champions since there's no rugby this year. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, that, that's just pretty much it. I only played for uh, Kurda and Northern on my brief though very enjoyable time in Scotland and I also played for Paraguay. Uh, I played Junior World Cup in 2003, way, way back then when it was still uh, FIRA. Uh, I was in Paris and then, uh, yeah, sort of worked up my way up the ranks. I captained the under 19s and under 21 squad. And then, I reckon it was 2005 or six that I started playing for the. Uh, Paraguay's first team. I also captained it a few times. It was, it was it's still it's still an honor to you know represent your country, but uh, some of those games could have been a bit more enjoyable, yeah. um, score wise probably. Hmm. I mean, it's it's <clears throat> it's quite interesting. Obviously, you talk about having a few caps in Paraguay and also captaining your country. Um, what is what is that like? Uh, it's it's kind of hard to describe. Actually, uh, it's a mixture of you know a lot of feelings. You think of your friends back at the club when you started out, and uh, mini rugby is you sort of think of your family. Uh, you think like probably you're the king of the world. You know, measuring up to. The big names in rugby, not that I actually did, but in my head, I sort of was. <laughs> um, yeah, there's just, you know, a, a huge sense of uh, just pride and, and joy, actually, yeah. Well done. So what is, sort of level or what, what opposition maybe would you have played against uh, to give us an idea? I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat that, please, Chase? Sorry, Andy. So, what what sort of opposition teams would you have played against to give us an idea? Uh, playing for Paraguay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I played Argentina. Not the not the whole Puma side, but some sort of not as low as development. But yeah, I've played. Yep. Uh, I played a couple of big games. Uh, I was seeing Gravy the. You know, current hooker, he's my age. I played him in under 19s and under 21s, and he was a beast back then. Still, I remember he dragging me for about three meters on the pitch trying to tackle him. I was just, you know, a little flag attached to a pole, running pole of a beast <laughs> of a human being. Um, but I tackled him though <laughs> a couple of times later. Um, what else did I play? Yeah, I played some big uh, back rows from Argentina. I uh, can't remember if it was Matera or one of the big lads. Uh, yeah, and then I played well in South America, Chile, Uruguay, uh, Brazil. What else? Uh, uh, yeah, and then a number of just visiting sides uh, school-wise from Brazilian club level. So, yeah, um, I think I've had my fair share of strong opposition. <laughs> Sounds like it. Uh, so, on to your time then in Edinburgh, how did you find out about the best club ever and, and when was this? 
pure chance. I mean, it was just the randomest story ever. Uh, I had done the tryouts for the uni, the Edinburgh Uni rugby team. Didn't hear back from them. I was sort of a bit pissed. And I had to come back to, well, they were flying me back home for the finals in October 2018. One of my mates just asked me for a pair of boots, went into the shop, that uh, rugby 15 shop. I don't know if we're allowed some publicity here. Anyway, no, so no, I'm, no. Not getting paid. I'm not getting paid, so fair mention. Other, uh, other, <laughs> other rugby shops are available. Um, <laughs> fair enough. Um, and then, yeah, just at the cash box, I just asked the dude that was there, do you know any you know, good fun clubs just to relax a bit? Uh, I'm just trying to get into social rugby. He just gave me uh, Northern's name. I can't recall if it was at a website or an email address. <laughs> anyway, wrote out that same night. Uh, got a reply from Dom. I was just traveling the next day. And then 10 days later, wrote back to Dom, said I was keen to go to practice. And yeah, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> it's nice to know, Jason, that um, first to team promote us. Um, I've never heard of that before. So. I... Um, <laughs> I think it could be someone like Nick Kadua uh, is friends with the, the owner or, or somebody who works there. there there's some connection. There. Probably. I, I don't know if it was the owner, but it was definitely a lad that used to play there. I, I remember distinctly, distinctively him telling me that. Okay. Hmm. So maybe work out some sort of partnership. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely. I mean, I, that shop's always very busy. Um, so a wee bit of a tangent here, um, Andy. Um, why why rugby? So obviously, when I think of South America, I think of football. Um, oh, you know, definitely. Par Paraguay good football, Argentina good football, Chile good football. Um, Argentina obviously the main rugby force, although Brazil's scrum seems to be something to be to reckon with. Why why rugby? Um, uh, family wise, my dad used to play rugby. And but way back when he really when he, when he started here, uh, and so did my uncles, so it was sort of natural to me to just go to the club. I don't remember watching him play, he retired very early due to a shoulder injury. I remember my uncles playing, um, I think it was second 15 back then when I was well, five or six years old, and then just naturally, my dad just took me to the club, started mini quit for a while and then when I was sort of 12 or 13 I was watching some internationals with my uncle he had some mates from South Africa that were visiting staying at my grandmother's and I just said I have to pick up rugby again and I did just fell in love with it with the, with the whole with the atmosphere with the game everything that comes with it it's just I think it's the greatest sport in the world Indeed. I'll drink to that. Uh, <laughs> I completely, to that, yeah. <laughs> completely agree. Um, no, it's 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 such a it's amazing. Obviously, over the last twenty weeks, we've had people coming on talking about why they play. Um, some are from family, some are from schools. You know, it's um, the power of the game is impressive to hear from everyone, and I think it's a it's a uniting it bond. Is. It really is. I, I, I've had the luck that my dad took me. Um, if it wasn't for him, you know, if he, if he wasn't playing rugby, I probably wouldn't have heard of it that much. It's not really that much um, publicized here. But then again, every now and again that we get together with, my, with our rugby mates, we think, we think out loud and we say, well, what would we have done if we didn't have rugby in our lives? I mean, it sounds a bit boring. Actually, <laughs> yeah. well, now, now we're seeing it, you know, to be honest. Yeah, right, yeah, it's a bit of a gaping hole in our lives in there. Um, so, so back, but back to Northern then, uh, Andy, is there something which you could point as, as a unique selling point uh, for Northern? Um, people in it, hands down, no questions. People in it are just, you know, great. All from different backgrounds and different countries, you know, 
mainly UK, but still very different countries, very different cultures. Uh, but it's just a bunch of nice blokes that last like enjoy rugby, enjoy a pint later. Um, it's just it's it's just brilliant. Uh, I, I think that without fear of being wrong, uh, I think that Northern has been sort of like the anchor on my on, on my time away from home. It was everything was new, weird, exciting, and then it was just a bit of normal that was Northern. That was just the same things I was doing home, playing for a club which is sort of small. Uh, managed by the players and enthusiasts and former players. It was, it, it felt just like home. So I'd say that's Northern's point. The people in it are just brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I would completely agree on that. I, when I joined Northern um, what, nine, nine years or eight years ago, less than that, um, I joined for new friends and I made them, although some of them may not count themselves as my friend, but I count them as my friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but definitely, I think that the people in it really make it what it is. Um, you know, we saw that the other night at the AGM and stuff and with the club dinners and um, even in a lockdown situation, it's nice that everyone is still together and still speaks and stuff, which is I think definitely one of our very powerful attributes. Um, definitely. So moving on to onto the pitch as such. You're only with us for a, a season and a couple of games. Um, so I won't ask you your favourite season. Um, but do you have any uh, favourite memories of your, your time oh, playing? Sorry about that. Oh, I don't apologise, it's all right. Um, um, favourite memories of, favorite. of club games, um, tournaments, etc. I've got quite a few. Uh, I have to say, my first game for Northern was a friendly to. When was it? Was it in November? It was just nothing spectacular. It was just that no one was actually expecting that much of me, especially when uh, uh, well, I'll just name him. Spills was at practice, and I was just trying to cope with Chris's heavy Scottish accent. Didn't really get a hold of the drills and. Spills was just, do you know what you're doing? That was, <laughs> yeah, I was sort of trying to adjust myself. You know, it was damp, cold. My hands were freezing. I was just trying to catch the ball. And then that was Thursday. And then on a Saturday, I just pulled about four or five big tackles. And then everyone was just in, instantly, whoa, this lad can tackle. And Spills was just ecstatic about me. He was just trying to keep me on his inside lane constantly. Um, mm. Then there's that game at Queensferry that we drew in the rain. Mm. Ah, that was just mental. <laughs> and I'd have to say the uh, East Bowl uh, finals. I mean, that we won. I mean, first year at a, at a foreign club, won a piece of silverware. What about what, what are the best moments at Northern? Totally. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be like spills to enjoying having a decent defensive player on his inside channel, eh, Jason? Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> he's made, made made his career out of having Jason there for him. Um, yeah, and and the odd occasion I did let slip somebody through the line. You would always hear him above you. Oh, I thought he was your man, Jason. <laughs> <clears throat> Sentences he he says very often. Um, so I always I always ask the question about tries because I'm I'm a greedy bastard and enjoy scoring them. I'm all about self-adulation. Um, do you have any favourite tries from your time at the club? They can be yourself or they can be someone else. Uh, who was it? It was probably one of Gollum's with it, with his wee uh, what do you call it with the dummies that he throws. <laughs> I think he scored one of forty or fifty meters out of something just. Dumbing people around. Um, probably one of the, I don't know if I, yeah, I've scored a couple. Last one was of you, Michael, uh, on a, um, two, I think it was a twos game away. It was, it was my last one, game. The ones game away at Earlston. Right, yeah. Set off brilliantly and then ended up losing to nothing. But at least I, you know, I scored so it wasn't half that bad. <laughs> 
I was hoping you'd mention that, um, mainly for my, my double dummy. Um, and not it was, no, yeah. yeah, you could have thrown an interception. You just held on to the ball just for one extra second and then just released me into space, which was brilliant. Mm. It, things, things went a bit downhill after you left, Andy, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, as you can, you made up. You weren't there for the last game uh, we had against Al Keith um, for two Oof, Yeah, obviously, obviously, I started well, um, but yeah, it was. Uh, but no, no, I, I remember. I remember that try vividly. Although that, that game was obviously a disappointing defeat. Um, it was a shame, um, but it was that. That's a. It's a horrible place to go. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, <laughs> it's Arlston. <clears throat> So, Andy, you played sort of second row and in the back row for us. Uh, talk us through then a few Northerners who you really enjoyed playing alongside them. Um, well, let's start with the second row. Well, you've got to have Gollum and those. <laughs> the dummies that he throws, I guess, just, they're in slow motion, but then again, everyone <laughs> goes for them every single time. They know he's going to do it. But they still go for that. I think that's <laughs> insane. So we've got a, a, a Gollum and his and his, <laughs> and his uh, dummies. Um, who else do we have? Uh, Holland. He's actually. I mean, you look at him and you say, "Oh, that's a weird cunt." <laughs> not my, not not my original phrasing. You know, there's a Scotland international went for that. I'm just repeating what I heard. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but but then again, he's more than he, you know. He's more than capable. He does a fine job. Every shift that he puts out is great. Um, well, so well, on the back row you have uh, Dom. I think I played with JT as well. You know, when he's not angry at the opposition, he, he tackles pretty much everything. Uh, well, so well, uh, Jeremy. Mm. Brilliant, brilliant in attack, and I also could communicate quite w quite well with him. Uh, Poundy, quite a strong ball mm -hmm. carrier as well, and tackler. Uh, Jamie, <laughs> who is not injured. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's yeah, that's pretty much all I, all I can remember. Mm -hmm. Next. Quite a few no, I, good Northern players, you know, at least from the time that I was there. We are we are very blessed in the back row and in the, in the second row, uh, I must admit, as a club. Um, some of the players are amongst the best I've ever played with in terms of their their talents and their abilities and their commitment as well. Paul was, one, Paul was obviously now the new captain, um, so um, which is fun. Who's, but, sorry, um, who's, the, who's the new captain? Paul. Oh, is he? That, yeah. That'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, he's thank new captain then. Yeah, <laughs> thankfully, I'll, I'll drink to that. But <laughs> thankfully, he doesn't watch the Coco Cast, so you won't have that. That, <laughs> that, that torch. Um, no, we are, we are, we are so blessed with back rows and stuff. It's, uh, it's impressive. Um, we could, we, could, we could use some more wingers and backs. It'd be nice if we could convert some of you. Um, so, obviously, uh, you were quite big on the social scene when you were at Northern. You definitely made the most of it. Um, oh, do, you yes. have a, do you have a favourite uh, Northern night out that you can remember? Uh, well, from what I can remember, Burns night was, you know, it was, it was, it was very special because it was my first social at Northern. Mm -hmm. um, Club dinner was brilliant. Uh, well, tour is just insane. It was definitely more than I expected. So yeah, this the social scene at Northern is quite important, and and it's really great actually. Oh, I remember uh, Calcutta Cup, twenty nineteen was it? Yeah, but that was wow. <laughs> that, that that was insane. I still remember just. Everyone shouting around, just throwing beer, <laughs> turning the volume up on the on the on, on the music. It was that was insane. That it was it was very much different gravy that 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 afternoon. Um, 
I suppose actually on on the note of obviously as a player coming in for a season and having those memories, what what is it about the social side at Northern that makes it? You've always talked about the people for making you stay at the club, but um, you know, is that something? That, do you think? I'm trying to get the question here. Um, what makes a good Northern night out? I think is the question I want to ask. A good Northern night out. Um, Okay, West uh, probably, I, don't know if, I think, yeah, no, Bunker does it, does it a lot for the night out. Um, you know, just the atmosphere, the bunker, you have all your history there, your silverware, you have, you know, your own bar. It's, it's, for me, it's very much like from my club here. So it's, it's a place that I can relate to very easily. And just, you know, the, the, the lads, the way... You enjoy the, the, the pints after rugby. It's just, it's probably the way that rugby is supposed to be enjoyed for me. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that makes it, that makes a whole difference. Uh, you know, I was very much looking forward to the drinking games, the songs, uh, the whole tradition that comes with rugby that we very seldomly get here unless we probably get some touring sites. Um, but yeah, that was that, that was quite special for me. So how did that tour to Budapest go for you? Uh, I think you were a tour virgin, or I was. I was a tour virgin, and I don't regret my decision. <laughs> it was brilliant. It, I I got way more than I could expect. So <laughs> uh, tour in Budapest was just brilliant. I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure how. How much am I allowed to speak of it, or the things that we did in it? But it was just great. <laughs> yeah, very I feel fun, the, fun city actually. The uh, the rule on that on that that question, um, it's probably for Mister Candlish to decide. But I'm not sure if you'll be coming back for our tour, so you can tell us what you'd like, because um, you can't be reversed. <laughs> And I, th- I, th- I think there are some internet moderators that might, you know, come pick me up if I just say a bit too much about the Geneva Convention and related stuff. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let that one slide, but uh, you may have the same answer for some of these listener questions then. Uh, Michael, if you want to start us off. Yeah, so um, you've got a couple that have come in. Um, the first one is from uh, Dr. Dom, um, and I, I think I know what this is relating to. Um, if you were to play hide and seek, where would your hiding place be? <laughs> Some undisclosed mate's house. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, that, was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was insane. People, my, my friends and family here at home were looking for me, you know. 8,000 kilometers away. <laughs> Excellent. So I, know, I feel like you're going to have to specify it. So just a mate's house, yeah? Right, yeah. Just a mate's house. Undisclosed <laughs> mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, that, that still ranks as one of my favourite Northern stories. Um, that you got the oh. cab on a Sunday to go <laughs> basically driving around the city to try and find you. Um <laughs> Jason, I think you've got the next question. Yeah. So this one from at Connor Fay the, Fay the Pans. Uh, can you give me any hairstyle tips? Any, sorry, what? Hairstyle tips. Hairstyle. Um, yeah. I mean, just, you know, you could do go with a top knot. Never fails. I mean, it's if you go around touring Europe or you just see main fashion capitals in the world, you notice that everyone has got one. So, well, at least everyone that matters. So that's free of charge. <laughs> hmm. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, I'm not sure we should look to, we should, um, I didn't vote for Brexit, but we should definitely not be looking at Europe for our hairstyles, um, <laughs> <clears throat> if I'm honest. Um, this one's more of a statement than a question. Um, from at Captain Paul, um, you're not getting my second role place back. Um, <laughs> I guess it's just a, yeah, I'm not quite sure how you can respond to that. So, um, 
I, I think we'll just have to see. There's a little fighting talk. <laughs> um, Jason, I think the last one is yours. Yeah, so the last one from at Wilson's Lonely Planet. Uh, Argentina, Uruguay or Paraguay? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't get that one. <laughs> so that's... I think he's basically asking for which is the best uh, option. So Argentina, Uruguay or Paraguay? For what? Yeah, it depends. I guess just visiting, maybe? <laughs> Oh, just to visit. Well, I'd, I'd always, you know, in Paraguay, you've got a friend and you've got Argentina very near. So, hard to pick. Uh, I'd say Paraguay first, then you can go to Argentina and probably then Uruguay. Well done. <laughs> I, must, I, must, I must admit, I... I, I um, I have never considered going to South America, but um, knowing you, Andy, I feel like I might. Not, not for many bad reason. Just it's. I'm, no, no, I'm, I know. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. not. It's, it's not on your local. Um, well, you, you know, you've got what hundred pounds flight, pretty much for anywhere in Europe. You wouldn't consider a five hundred or eight hundred pound flight to halfway across the world. It's understandable, but. South America, <laughs> it's uh, it's like a northern tour, ten times. <laughs> that is that is bold um, as a statement. Oh no, yes, it is. It is. But I've, I've been on one tour, so I I think I know what I'm talking about. Probably missing out on the, you know, probably just exaggerating a little bit. Call it five times, makes it, you know, meet you halfway. No, de I definitely. I think um, everything I've heard about South America is amazing. I mean, you, you touched on a subject close to my heart, my wallet. Um, that's probably the main reason why yes. I got to America. I don't have 600 pounds to fly to Argentina. Um, but no, I've heard a lot of good things. So Tom Simpson, I think, went around Argentina for a month with his, um, his family and seemed to really enjoy it. Um, I have a few friends who've been to Argentina and stuff. Um, no one has been to Paraguay, so, um, but I'll keep it on my list, knowing that you are, you are a friend to go and see um so i think we'll, we'll get to the stage of wrapping up now andy um what are you most looking forward to when lockdown ends Whew. uh a lot of things actually uh probably rugby i haven't played rugby since the finals last year which were held in mid october i reckon um so yeah definitely eager to get back to playing rugby I'm down to my last probably couple of years or so, so when I get the best of them, uh, and just probably yeah, the socials, just you know, getting together with friends, going to a bar, a pub, or just a regular barbecue or a you know a, a party with friends. That's probably one of the things I miss the most about this whole lockdown situation: just the social human interaction that we're very used to here in, in, in Paraguay. Mm. Right. Uh, cheers, Andy. So we're, we're heading for weekly episodes now that UK restrictions are being lifted uh, and we're hopefully getting back to some sort of normality. So join us next week then on the Cockle Cast where we catch up with former captain Chris Aiken and niche chocolate bar reviewer Neil Hardman. Uh, for now, though, I'm Jason Thompson. He's Michael Maudsley. And thank you to Andy for joining us. Uh, stay safe and we look forward to planning a uh, South American tour in years to come. <laughs> Cheers. I'll be here waiting. Tour times five. <laughs>